National Educator. Hello student, my name is Mary Kamau, I'm teaching biology for four and our topic of discussion is genetics, subtopic variations. So our lesson objectives are number one, Define the term genetics. By the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to define the term genetics. Number two, define the term variation. By the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to describe the two types of variations. State examples of each type of variation and also state the causes of variations. So I'm starting by defining the first two terms that is genetics and variations. Genetics is the study of inheritance and variations. Variations are observable differences between individuals. Genetics is the study of inheritance and variations, where variations are observable differences between individuals. Some organisms of the same kind may vary in size shape and form despite the fact that they are offsprings which are reproduced by the same organisms. However, they may also resemble their parents. Organisms may vary in size, shape, and form, but these organisms are produced by the same parents, so somehow they will resemble their parental forms, but still show some differences. So these differences are the ones that we are referring to as variations. These variations are categorized into two groups. Number one, we have continuous variations and number two, we have discontinuous variations. Classifications of variations, we have continuous variations and discontinuous variations. Student, we will start by discussing continuous variations. Continuous variations are those variations or they are those differences which exhibit a wide range of differences for the same characteristic. I repeat, continuous variations are those variations which exhibit a wide range of differences for the same characteristics. These differences are observable differences. So these variations have several intermediate forms of phenotypes. Phenotypes are physical characteristics. And that is why we are saying these variations are therefore observable characteristics. So examples of continuous variations 
are the height in human beings. In that diagram that is there, you can see between the, the, the tallest person and the shortest person there, there are several other people inside there with different heights. And that is why we have these variations as physical and therefore they are continuous variations. Another example of continuous variations is the body weight as shown in the second diagram there. Uh, in that diagram or in that table, person number five is the lightest person with 97 kgs or kilograms. And then we have the lightest who has one that uh, 136 kilograms. So between the lightest person and the heaviest person, there are so many other people in between with different weights. Hence, a continuous variation. There are more other examples of continuous variations, such as the skin color in humans between probably the darkest person and the lightest person. You find so many other people in between there. We have in plants, the length of internodes on the stem. Different stems have different ha lengths in their internodes. The number of branches in plants. Different plants have different number of branches and uh, therefore a continuous variation. The size of fruits at maturity in plants also di are also different. So these continuous variations are controlled by many genes. The continuous variations are controlled by many genes. Genes are hereditary factors. They are the ones which transmits inheritable characteristics from the parents to their offsprings. And that is why I said there before that even though people may belong to the same family or it is a, a nuclear family, for example, the offsprings will differ from their parents they will have some observable physical characteristics. You may find that the father is tall, the mother is short, but the offspring is in between uh, the two parents. So these characteristics are controlled by genes or by many genes. And these uh, characteristics, they are physical expressions can be influenced by the environment. I want to give an example there of a plant, for example, that has genes for growing tall. So if this plant grows in an environment which is not conducive, probably it doesn't have adequate amount of water or adequate amount of nutrients, even though that plant has genes for growing tall, that plant will not grow tall. It will grow short. And that is why I'm saying that uh, these uh, variations can be influenced by the environment. 
So continuous variations have intermediate form or phenotypes. The second group is the discontinuous variations. Discontinuous variations lack intermediate forms of phenotypes. That means these variations are definite, these variations are distinct, and they are controlled by one or two major genes. Student, remember I said continuous variations are controlled by many genes. So discontinuous variations are controlled by one or two major genes. Again, I've said that continuous variations have intermediate forms or phenotypes. And that is why I've given those examples. A simple example of a body weight. Take an example of the person who is heaviest or the student who is heaviest in your class and the student who is lightest in your class. So you realize that in between the two, there are so many other students in between uh, with different weights. So we don't have that in discontinuous variations. They lack intermediate forms of phenotypes and therefore they are divinate and they are distinct and they are controlled by one or two major genes. These variations are not influenced by the environment. They are not influenced by the environment. Like I, I've given a case in a continuous variation. So examples of discontinuous variations includes number one, sex in humans. That is, you are either a male or a female. And being a male or a female is not in any way or cannot in any way be influenced by the environment. ABO blood group system in humans is another good example of a discontinuous variation. So you can either be or you can only be a blood group A, blood group B, AB, or O, and no other. Hence, ABO blood group system is a very good example of a discontinuous variation. The earlobe attachment in humans, I will show you that. Hair in the nose, that is a long hair in the nose, long hair in the pinna, again in humans, I will illustrate that in a short while. A popo tree also exhibits a discontinuous variation in that it can only be a male or a female. So in that diagram, you can see a man who has a hairy pinna, that is the hairs in the ears, and a hairy nose. So you can only be, or you can only have the hairy nose, hairy pinna, or you don't have it at all. This is a characteristic that is exhibited by males. It is not there in females, as we are going to see in our next discussion. There are two children there. One is able to roar his tongue. The other one is not able to roar his tongue. 
So you can either be a tongue roller or a non tongue roller. But you cannot be in between the two. Hence, a discontinuous variation. <laughs>